Paperboy is a 1985 arcade game developed and published by Atari Games. The player takes the role of a paperboy who delivers a fictional newspaper called The Daily Sun along a suburban street on his bicycle. The game was ported to a wide range of video game consoles and personal computers beginning in 1986. The arcade version of the game featured bike handlebars as the controller. A sequel for home computers and consoles, Paperboy 2, was released in 1991. Gameplay The player controls a paperboy on a bicycle delivering newspapers along a suburban street which is displayed in a cabinet perspective or oblique projection view. The player attempts to deliver a week of daily newspapers to subscribing customers, attempts to vandalize non-subscribers' homes and must avoid hazards along the street. Subscribers are lost by missing a delivery or damaging a subscriber's house. The game begins with a choice of difficulty levels, easy street, middle road and hard way. The object of the game is to perfectly deliver papers to subscribers for an entire week and avoid crashing which counts as one of the player's lives before the week ends. The game lasts for seven in-game days, Monday through Sunday, controlling the paperboy with the handlebar controls, the player attempts to deliver newspapers to subscribers. Each day begins by showing an overview of the street indicating subscribers and non-subscribers. Subscribers and non-subscribers' homes are also easy to discern in the level itself, with subscribers living in brightly colored houses, and non-subscribers living in dark houses. <laughs> Hardware The cabinet of this game is a standard upright but with custom controls. The controls consist of a bicycle handlebar a modified Star Wars yoke with one button on each side, used to throw papers. The handlebars can be pushed forward to accelerate and pulled back to brake. The game runs on the Atari System 2 hardware. The CPU is a 10 MHz Digital Equipment Corporation DAC T11. For sound and coin inputs, it uses a 2.2 MHz MOS Technology 6502. The sound chips are two Pokies for digital sound, a Yamaha YM2151 for music, and a Texas Instruments TMS5220 for speech. The protection chip is a slapstick model 137412-105. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Ports and re-releases. After Paperboy was released in North American arcades in April 1985, the game was ported to video game consoles and home computers, starting in 1986. In some of these versions, the player could assume the role of a papergirl instead of a paperboy. Paperboy was ported to the BBC Micro and Acorn Electron by Andy Williams in 1986. Versions for the Amstrad CPC, Apple II, and TRS-80 color computer were also released in 1986. Elite Systems produced versions for the ZX Spectrum and the Commodore 64. The ZX Spectrum version had been released in the United Kingdom by October 1986, and the Commodore 64 version was published there by February 1987. Elite created versions for the Commodore 16 and Commodore Plus. Four later that year, a version for the Apple IIGS was released in 1988. In the United States, a Nintendo Entertainment System NES version was developed by Tengen and published by Mindscape in December 1988. The NES version is particularly notable for being the first NES game developed in the United States. In October 1989, Elite released versions for the Atari Street and PC in the United Kingdom, followed by an Amiga version later that month. The game was released for the Famicom by Altron in January 1991. In the United Kingdom, a Game Boy version by Mindscape was released in October or November 1990. A Master System version, by Sega and US Gold, was released in the United Kingdom in November 1990. Atari released a version of Paperboy for the Atari Lynx in 1990. By March 1991, an NES version by Mindscape had been released in the United Kingdom. Reception Anthony Bayes of Allgame rated the arcade version 4 stars out of 5, praising its isometric view and calling it 
one of the most innovative coin op games of the mid 1980s. In 2007, Spanner Spencer of Eurogamer rated the arcade version 9 out of 10 and praised its gameplay, graphics, and music. Advanced Computer Entertainment Ace offered praise for the Atari Street version, awarding it a score of 850 out of 1000, while Zero gave it a score of 86 out of 100. Ace and Zero noted that the Atari Street version looked and played like the arcade version. Computer Gamer gave the ZX Spectrum version a rating of 16 out of 20, considering it to be a faithful conversion of the arcade game, while noting that some people may find the gameplay to be repetitive. For the ZX Spectrum, Commodore 64 and Amstrad CPC versions, Ace gave the game a rating of 5 out of 5, noting the extremely well executed graphics and referring to the game as a Budget Classic. UK Magazine Computer and Video Games CVG gave the Commodore 64 version a 52% rating, criticizing its music and blocky and ill-proportioned sprites. The magazine gave the ZX Spectrum version an 83% rating. Ken McMahon of Commodore User reviewed the Commodore 16 and Commodore Plus 4 version and rated it 6 out of 10, noting that it was too easy. Crash gave the ZX Spectrum version an 88% rating with the general rating, another slick, playable conversion from Elite, while ZZAP 64 was less enthusiastic for the Commodore 64 version, giving it 44%. In 1993, ZZAP-64 rated the Commodore 64 version a 60% score, calling it repetitive. Richard Ledbetter of CVG reviewed the Lynx version and stated, "...looks good, but simply isn't enough fun to play." Starts Clayton Walnum similarly praised the Lynx version's graphics and sound effects but deemed the game, "...just another shoot em up without the shooting." Rays offered praise for the clear and colorful graphics of the Lynx version, but stated that the game is too old and tired for the exciting and new Lynx. All games Kyle Knight criticized the Lynx version for its simple sound effects and music, as well as its repetitive gameplay. Ledbetter praised the Master System version, calling it one of the best arcade conversions available for the system, while noting that the game's only slight downer was the music. Mean Machines praised the Master System version for its graphics and similarities to the arcade game, while Rays wrote a mixed review for the Master System version. Mean Machines was critical of the NES version for its graphics, sound, and controls, and concluded that it was a highly offensive product which weighs in as a sadly derisive conversion of a classic coin-op. Brett Allen Weiss of Allgame stated that Mindscape did a good job of porting the game to the NES. Weiss praised the controls and sound effects of the NES version, but criticized the music. Rays considered the Game Boy version to be excellent, while Mean Machines criticized its controls, blurry scrolling, and the lack of colorful graphics, which could not be produced by the system. Ace noted slightly difficult controls and poor sound effects for the Game Boy version, the one gave the Amiga version 80% stating that it's an almost flawless conversion of the arcade game. Ace gave the Amiga version a rating of 878, calling it a perfect conversion of the arcade game. Tony Dillon of Commodore User gave the Amiga version an 83% rating and considered it to be nearly identical to the arcade version. Gordon Houghton of CVG gave the Amiga version a 69% rating, stating that the sound was arguably better than the arcade version, but noting that the graphics were jerky and that the gameplay had been altered from the arcade version. Houghton concluded that it was, "...not a bad game, but it's too old and too expensive to deserve greater praise." Compute praised the music and graphics of the Amiga version, but considered the gameplay to be outdated and repetitive. Robert A. Young of IGN reviewed the Lynx version in 1999, and considered it to be a, "...decent," adaptation of the arcade game. Young noted the game's, "...average quality." graphics and sound, and concluded, not a bad game, though not one of the Lynx's best. <laughs> Later releases IGN's Craig Harris reviewed the Game Boy Color version and stated that it is definitely the worst rendition of the game, even beating out the Atari Lynx's watered-down port of the arcade game. Harris criticized the game's music, the lack of speech audio from the original game, poor collision detection, and a lack of fun. 
Scott Allen Marriott of Allgame praised the Game Boy Color version for its colorful graphics, but noted that the game did not introduce any new changes from the original arcade version, writing, "...those expecting a lot of changes or additions will be disappointed." Dean Austin of IGN criticized the retro 3D look of the Nintendo 64 version, but praised the gameplay and considered it to be a "...great game." Daniel Erickson of Daily Radar criticized the "...bland." and "...repetitive." gameplay of the Nintendo 64 version. Robert Amsbury of Game Revolution praised the sound effects in the Nintendo 64 version, but considered the music to be repetitive, while noting that the game isn't really all that fun. Weiss criticized the Nintendo 64 version for its music and sound effects, as well as poor controls, and wrote that the game had some of the ugliest graphics you'll find in a Nintendo 64 cartridge. Ben Stahl of GameSpot noted the outdated sound effects used in the Nintendo 64 version, and stated, "...while a decent game on its own, Paper Boy 64 doesn't capture the magic of the original arcade game." IGN's Levi Buchanan, reviewing the cell phone version, praised the controls and stated that the game looked and played like the original arcade game. According to Metacritic, the Xbox 360 version received, "...mixed or average reviews." Team Xbox gave the Xbox 360 version an overall score of 8.2, stating that Paperboy delivers as advertised in the classifieds. Greg Seward of GamesRadar considered the Xbox 360 version to be an authentic recreation of the arcade version, but noted that the game, like previous versions, suffers from imprecise controls due to the absence of the arcade game's handlebar controller. Jeff Gerstmann of GameSpot reviewed the Xbox 360 re-release and was disappointed by the lack of new sound effects and music, as well as the lack of graphical updates. Gerstmann stated that the game would most likely appeal to people who have fond memories of the original arcade game. IGN's Eric Brudvig, reviewing the Xbox 360 version, considered the game to be a limited amount of fun. Brudvig noted the lack of a handlebar controller and stated that, thanks to the isometric view, this version of Paperboy suffers from the same wonky controls that every home version of the game has. Kristen Reed of Eurogamer praised the Xbox 360 re-release for its controls and noted that the game stands up pretty well, despite its age, although he stated that the game quickly becomes repetitive. Corey Cohen of Official Xbox Magazine praised the Xbox 360 version for its music and controls, and noted that it was as appealing as the arcade version. Taryn Van Der Beil of Pocket Gamer criticized the iPhone version for its poor controls, and stated that the game's optional 3D graphics mode was ugly and feels clumsy and inaccurate. Slide to Play considered the iPhone iPod version a mixed bag, but praised the gameplay. Mark Langshaw of Digital Spy reviewed the iPhone version and stated that it would likely appeal most to fans of the original game. Langshaw concluded, As far as nostalgic remakes go, Paperboy delivers but doesn't quite do enough to make the front page. According to Metacritic, Paperboy, Special Delivery has a score of 55 out of 100, indicating mixed or average reviews. Blake Patterson of Touch Arcade considered Paperboy, Special Delivery to be an improvement over Elite's iPhone version, praising the improved controls and graphics. John Mundy of Pocket Gamer rated the game 5 out of 10, criticizing the gameplay and controls, and writing that the biggest flaw is the game's technical shortcomings. The graphics are extremely basic and yet the game paused and stuttered repeatedly on my second generation iPod Touch. Andrew Nesvadba of AppSpy rated the game 3 out of 5, praising the updated graphics while criticizing the controls. Nesvadba also praised the addition of a story mode, but criticized its short length. Jeremiah Leaf Johnson of Gamesibo gave the game 3 stars out of 5, praising the story mode and the 1980s style graphics, but criticizing the poor controls. Legacy A sequel, Paperboy 2, was released in 1991 for several home systems. Paperboy, in its original arcade form, is included in the 1998 PlayStation video game Arcade's Greatest Hits, the Atari Collection 2. 
a Game Boy Color version, developed by Digital Eclipse Software and published by Midway Games, was released in the United States on May 30, 1999. By July 1997, developer High Voltage Software had begun conceptual development of a Nintendo 64 version and was searching for a game publisher, with a possible release in 1998. In August 1998, Midway Games announced that it would be publishing the Nintendo 64 game, which was still in conceptual stages and was expected for release in late 1999. The game was developed using a 3D polygonal game engine, and was released in the United States on October 26, 1999. In May 2000, Midway announced plans to release Paperboy for the PlayStation later that year, although the game was never released. Paperboy was later included in the 2003 video game Midway Arcade Treasures, a compilation of arcade games for the Nintendo GameCube, PlayStation 2, Xbox, and Microsoft Windows. In May 2005, Sega Mobile announced that it would release Paperboy for mobile phones. The game was released in May 2006. Paperboy was also released on February 14, 2007 on Xbox Live Arcade for the Xbox 360, however, the game was removed by 2010, an iPhone, iPod Touch version was released through the App Store on December 18, 2009. The game was developed by Vivid Games and published by Elite Systems. Elite removed the game from the App Store in March 2010, because of a licensing conflict. GLU Mobile developed and published a new iPhone, iPod Touch version, titled Paperboy, Special Delivery, on November 4, 2010. The game included a 20-level story mode in which the Paperboy is saving money from his job to buy a new game console, but he later falls in love and throws roses instead of newspapers. The game also featured an optional tilt-based control mode in which the iPhone is tilted to control the Paperboy. A port of Paperboy can be accessed in the 2015 video game LEGO Dimensions by using the arcade dock in the level, Painting the Town Black. Topic: In other media. Along with Hyper Sports, Paperboy formed one of the computer game rounds in a children's television quiz, First Class, shown on BBC in the 1980s. The Paperboy makes a cameo appearance in the 2012 Disney animated film Wreck-It Ralph. The Paperboy also makes an appearance in the 2015 film Pixels. <laughs>